morning class today we are going to learn about firefighting uh, you better know what is firefighting in general most of you would have seen the firefighting services or uh, you know the basic thing about the firefighting what we need to consider and what we need to not so what do you mean by firefighting in architecture it means providing the ways so that we can make our building more safer place for people who are residing inside the building either it's a residential or a commercial building or and also making it accessible for the firefighters to come and help the people which are stuck inside these can be done you know with various methods uh, we have passive technologies and active technologies so we'll be learning about both will i'll tell you everything in the brief also i'll give you this ppt so that you can uh, anytime read it and uh, understand it what you need to see anyways you can anytime uh, see this video again and again for your reference so let's start so fire safety concept chart this is a fire safety concept chart so which uh, describes the objectives of fire safety which are two objectives that uh, first is to prevent the fire ignition second second is to manage the fire ignition so prevention comes ki what are the active or passive technology we are using second thing is manage fire ignition in manage fire ignition it comes then to manage and to manage exposed so in manage fire we control the combustion process control it by uh, construction or suppress the fire by again using some technologies uh, we manage the exposed thing is ki we limit the amount of exposed safeguard the exposed exposed here means ki whatever material exposed material or you know whatever the thing which is exposed to the fire it's managed we have used a limited amount of a uh, material which is non combustible or say less combustible fire escape or uh, what we can call it a fire exit a uh, fire escape is a special kind of emergency exit usually mounted to the outside of the building means like uh, it's a kind of a route or a, you know a escape to the building which normally leads to the outside of the building means which is an open area but sometimes in some areas uh, means where we have you know less availability of space we can open these things or maybe it can be due to the design we can open these things into the building the escape or an event of fire to the other emergencies that makes the staircase inside a building inaccessible so here are the some rules which are given in the nbc that is national building code according to which we need to always uh, means design or what we can say is ki design the fire escapes which are to be considered in some buildings especially the commercial buildings so here they are so the first one is the any access it may be any doorway or corridors passageway which are you know fire exits they have to be leaded into the veranda or uh, maybe any street or terrace which an exit may be anything means like doorway corridor or passageways or any internal staircase or external staircase or a veranda or a terrace but they all of them must have a you know basic street access or to the roof of the building or a refuge area all of these three things means like uh, all the passageways refuge areas and uh, terrace of the building should have, have an access or an uh, you know option of access for the firefighters to come and save you people quick read on these and uh, you may just clear out your doubts 
if any doubt you can anytime contact us exits shall be clearly visible uh, there should be route map on each and every floor near near the staircase or after every 30 meters so sign boards should be illuminated there should be an alternative source of uh, supply lifts and accelerator shall not be considered as exits color of sign board should be green so that people can you know usually usually understand what's going on and where to be highlighted the thing or this is the safest place no exit doorway should less be less than one meter width expect assembly buildings expect assembly buildings where the door shall not be less than two meters the doorway shall not be less than two meters in height also overhead sliding door shall not be installed exit door shall not open immediately upon a flight of a staircase i mean to say ki when you have a flight means like uh, when you are getting down of a stairs there should be a proper landing provided so that uh, you may open the door you have speci- sufficient space and you you may move easily exit doors mainly shall be openable from both sides or from a side which they serve without the use of a key means which from the side which we cannot lock uh, there should be no mirrors used in the you know uh, exit ways so uh, because mirrors always at the places like this they create a chaos and a confusion between the people so now we are going to discuss about the horizontal exits so what are the horizontal exits the width of the horizontal exits shall be the same for the exit of the doorways means like if the doorways are of 1 meter so at least there should be uh, the width of 1 meter of the horizontal exits so horizontal horizontal exits are basically your corridors or pathways which are leading to the main street or main open area or uh, any safe area a horizontal s- exit shall be equipped with at least one fire smoke door or minimum one hour of resistance okay so the horizontal exit shall be equipped with at least you know one smoke or fire detector and the material whatever they used is should be of at least one hour of fire resistance and also uh, all the horizontal exits should be directly connected to the fire escape staircase for evacuation so the refuge area is a area which is an open space which is an open space uh, which provides a shelter to the people during a fire hazard in your building uh, refuge area is directly connected to the means is on the side of your street from where uh, the fire people may rescue you uh, refuge area is always given immediately after 24 meter so uh, and after every 15 meter this should be provided so fire lift fire lift actually uh, is a symbol which you might have seen in your college or in any commercial space that there is a fire switch in a building so by enabling that fire switches uh, what happens is we directly have a approach to fast access to the desired floor whatever it may be uh, from outside any people if any people presses any button lift won't stop there it will give a direct approach from uh your position to the desired your position because in case of uh fire hazards uh, these things are to be seen very clearly that fast access is necessary so that we can uh, evacuate as fast as possible so normal lifts should not be used these are special type of lifts that are used the 
this is an external staircase you might have seen external staircase then what is an external staircase basically this is a staircase which is given outside of your building it is made up of non combustion material uh, any doorway leading to the external staircase should be at least uh, fire resistant for two hours so that people on the external staircase can be safe and can evacuate as fast as possible so the basically basic thing is ki external staircase shall not have straight flight less than 1.25 meter wide and treads and risers should not be more than 250 mm and 190 mm the ri 15 risers per flight adopted for a protected escape routes against the ingress of the smoke especially in high-rise high buildings air is injected into the staircase lobbies or corridors to raise the pressure slightly above the pressure in the adjacent parts of the building because as a result it gives increase of smoke or toxic gases into the escape routes which prevent people to suffocate inside the corridors or staircase areas so service ducts all the service ducts if provided should have been enclosed by a wall and that wall should be at least for two hours fire resistant uh, it should be sealed with at every alternative floor with non combustion metals which can hold fire for at least two hours Also, the ceiling at the floors is to be prevented, prevent to travel the smoke and fires to the upper floors through the ducts. So these are some fire resistance material which we can use in our building. Uh, generally, these are rock wool, gypsum boards, absto sheets, tile boards, calcium silicate boards, treated lumber plywood treated vegetables, fiber like cotton, jute, kenaf, hemp, flax, etc. Fire resistant treated wood, bricks, concrete, cement render or anything. So these are some norms again given by NBC like the width of the road. So any building there should be minimum width of So the road near the shopping mall, let's take example of a shopping mall. If it's a shopping mall, then road near the shopping mall should be at least 12 meter in the width, from, at least from a single side. As you can see in the first picture, in the second picture, in the third and the fourth. In the first, we have a straight 12 meter road. In the second, we have a single side axis of 12 meter, but another side, it's going narrowing down. On the third picture you can say it's 12 meter road but it's L shape so it's allowed but when you have a narrow road on the both side but just in the front of the mold you have 12 meter access it's not allowed access to the side so this is a thing that every shopping mall which is more than 15 meters in the height should have two axes far away from each other and at least the width of 4.5 meter and height clearance should be 5 meter because it provides safety uh, approaches to the firefighters so open spaces these are some uh, these are some norms for the open spaces to the height of the building which we need to provide according to the bylaws parking so if an open space or sets setbacks area is more than 12 meter of the car parking can be given from 6 meter motorable road parking if open spaces or setback area is more than 12 meters the car parking can be given there leaving 6 meters of the motorable road mean to say when you have this of your site and your setbacks are more than 12 meters so what you can do is you can provide 
a car parking leaving 6 meter of this motorable space so that any uh, during any hazard uh, the fire vehicle can come easily and access to the building to safeguard you people basement parking in basement parking there should be at least two ramps provided on the either sides so that evacuation can be possible as early as possible these are some signs which you need to understand ki what are the different types of fire extinguishers so this is actually a fire and extinguisher chart which is showing ki what what type of fire extinguishers are they water means they are basically it's shown of four types over here so water foam dry powder and carbon dioxide these also show ki which thing is applicable on which which materials these are some other fire equipments and their symbols which can be uh, shown on the signage lists so passive system what is basically as we discussed in the starting so what is basically a passive system passive system is focus on prohibiting and containing fires also known as prevention systems once in a place nothing else has to occur from them to be a part of fire controls so basically passive system is a system in which which we take care when we construct our building so basically passive system is a system which we take care during planning stage and during the implementation of the building on the site these are like uh, your barriers your horizontal assemblies or openings uh finishes what kind of finishes you have provided in your building or it may be any kind of indoors and windows so these are some kind of passive systems and whereas the active systems are which are considered to be installed after the building is completed or you can say mechanically controlled like detection systems extinguishers suppression compression system ya fir emergency lighting etc so what is basically a firewall firewall are not usually added to the existing building it's it is provided between two buildings or blocks provides complete vertical separation of areas in a building it extends from the slab to the roof and from the exterior wall to the wall parapet is a firewall that extends above the roof rated 3 or 4 hours typically minimum 2 hours is required barriers horizontal assemblies or fire partitions what are fire fire barriers what are fire barriers fire barriers are walls that provide a fire resistant rating and must not be continuous from floor to floor floor to ceiling assembly they actually extends to a suspended ceiling joints are sealed and the number of doors windows are limited a basic thing which we can uh, use if means if you are not getting any terminology what you can do is you can just relate the term with your common language like fire barrier so what are the barriers which are present during a fire escape we need to avoid those 
barriers mainly we need to avoid the barriers which will spread the fire means if any joint is leaked so we need to avoid this we need to seal the joint horizontal assemblies they serve same function as the fire barriers it extends and extends horizontally from one rated wall to the another so smoke detectors you know what are the basic smoke smoke detectors what does they work uh, and they are used in large commercial industries and residential buildings are usually powered by central fire alarm system means they are actually connected with the uh, central fire uh, office which is nearby your location and they have a, their own battery backup so that in case of electricity cut they may provide the signal to the office these are of two types first is uh, first type is ionization uh, in which radioactive source is used to ionize the air within sensing chambers another one is photoelectric in this the principle of reflected or scattered light is used to indicate the presence of visual smoke so here are some pictures which you have mightly uh, might observed in any kind of commercial or residential buildings so now these are heat and smoke vents heat and smoke vents are installed in a building as an active fire protection measure <clears throat> there are openings on the roof which are intended to vent the heat and smoke developed by the fire inside the building by action of biocancy such as such that they are known as gravity vents types of vents so actually uh, that it may be automatic or it may be manual so what is the main basic function is it provides the air from the up and it helps to regulate inside so that the smoke may go outside generally each of our means most of the houses or commercial buildings are uh, designed on this principles like in houses we have open spaces or we can say jal which we provide for you know electricity and cross ventilation and in malls we have atriums again these are some uh, mbc rules which you can which you can adopt for your building design these are fire fire extinguishers of different sizes hose seal system so this is actually a kind of water a uh, fire water pipe system which is intended for the occupant to use during the early stages of the fire and comprising hose seal pumps the fire storage tank hose reels pipe work and walls so this is a this in this figure a basic installation of a hose reel system is shown what happens over is here is we have a motor we have a stand pipe it comes of different different classes what we can do is we can attach a pipe over here and we can help the initial stages uh, extinguish the fire which is in initial stages so these are some sprinkle systems these may be automatic or manual automatic system is by uh, switching on the emergency alarm button they'll be on and automatic system is they'll automatically detect the system and they will start sprinkling the water on it they are basically installed with the smoke detectors water rising system there are mainly three types of sprinkle systems so wet system alternative dry and wet pipe and dry pipe so we'll be studying this is a wet pipe system uh, wet pipe system is a system which is permanently charges the water means any time those pipes will be filled out of water supply so that any time they may be used another one is dry pipe system in which water is allowed only when it is needed 
it is always there in main pipe but in the sprinklers it comes only on only when it is allowed by pressing uh, by activating the dry pipe valve and this is the alternative system in which in winters the pipe is dry with the air pressure of 2.8 bar but in summers the pipe is always wet means full of water these are again some symbols which we use in evacuation of plan which we need to show in our drawings or in signages again this is the example which we need to show like a site plan it's not always necessary to show uh, this kind of rendered plan we, you, can, you can just show a simple AutoCAD plan but you what is the main function of showing this picture is you need to show the main exits as shown by red arrows so now here is an another example you can see ki how they have shown ki what are the main exits by a continuous line and dotted exits are which connects the emergency exits to the open spaces in case of high alert this was a system of fire safety hope you would have get a better idea through this video still you have any doubts you can always contact uh, your faculty and uh, clear doubts uh, one more main thing is ki in fire escape plan what you need to show is uh, not only just these arrows but also you need to show these fire extinguishers telephone first aid kits electrical panels also uh, smoke detectors and fire detectors Thank you.